everyone. Thank you for joining me on Triumphant Victorious Reminders with Teresa Ann. On today's Heavenly Whip Monday, I want to ask you a question. If someone were to cast a spell on you, would you be scared? That's what's coming up next. So what if someone came to you and cursed you with a spell? What would you do? Would you be scared? Rightfully so. Would you be shaking in your boots and just be like, oh my God. Or what if someone who you knew was a witch or they touched you and they laid hands on you? Do you believe that the power of the enemy would overtake you? Isn't that interesting? Most of us would probably say yes to that. Those of you who say no, then you know the power of God. Here's what I'm realizing. That we have more reverence unknowingly for the power of the enemy than we do for the power of God. You see, we have to get to a place where even in the midst of being fearful and uh, scared, because that will happen, that we get a hold of this power of God that, wow, you guys, he has no rival. What does that really mean? What does it mean for God to not have a rival? Well, if you think about it like this, the enemy is not equal to God on the opposite spectrum. The enemy is actually the opposite of one of God's highest angels, but not God. There is no one like him. So if there's no one like him, that means there can be no one that is opposed to him that can even try to overpower him. So if we really got a hold of this revelation that Christ is for us, then we would understand that the against us powers has nothing on the power of God. So if we get into the word, we're going to understand that we are equipped by the Spirit to live in the authority that Christ has given to us. Not outside of Him, but in Him. You guys, I'm not there yet. I mean, I've let the tiniest things get to me. So when a curse comes upon you, the blessing repels it. The blessing of God repels it. Do we believe that? Do we believe it? It's time that we believe the power of God more than the power of the enemy. This is so crucial. This is so crucial or else we, what happens is we just keep allowing the power of the enemy to have the narrative over our life and say, oh, it's too scary. It's too scary. I'm not going to go over there. I'm going to shelter my kids. I'm going to shelter myself. How is sheltering anybody going to equip them to know what to do when the enemy does come in? See, our job is not to respond to fear. Our job is to respond to God in the midst of the fear. So let's practically, when you hear a curse or you hear someone speak death over you, immediately get excited in the Lord and say, God, Wait, what do you say? It's to drive you deeper to the Lord. It's not to drive you further away from him. It's to drive you deeper. And so then they don't even know what to do because they're they're like, wait, they're not responding in fear right now. They're responding to God. Wait, this isn't working. See, they thrive in fear. So when you get fearful, it feeds them. When you get scared, it feeds them. It feeds this power within them. When they curse you, when they curse me, and we respond differently, we say, wow, you just reminded me of the blessings of God that he has on my life. If someone curses you, all you say is, oh my goodness, you just reminded me of who is for me. Thank you for that reminder. God is for me, and I cannot wait for you to realize that God is for you. See, a lot of times when they come and they retaliate, or they curse you, God has just highlighted who to pray for. God has just highlighted who he wants in his kingdom. And he's like, are you willing to do it my way? Are you going to get scared and let them get away and let the enemy have them yet again? 
Or are you going to do it my way and see me, not them, not see the curse? But are you going to see me in the midst of all of it? See, this is where we get to finally just get in with Jesus and say, Lord, I don't truly know who you are. Because if I knew who you were, I wouldn't be scared. I wouldn't be fearful. See, these are the moments of training. These are the moments of of pressing. These are the moments that we get to find out who God is even more. Don't run from him, but run to him. Again, when you hear a curse or you, someone says, you know, as I touch you, you have been marked or whatever, however they say it, right? You just say, no, you just touched God's anointed. And when you touch the anointing of God, he breaks the yoke of bondage. And now you are set free. I call freedom over you in Jesus' mighty name because Jesus is your freedom. This is how we get to live out the gospel message. Are you going to flip the script when those things come against you? Or are you going to just receive it? Are you just going to receive the curse? Are you just going to receive all of the anxiety and the hopelessness? That is what's so beautiful about this whole life in Christ. It's never to have us walk in intimidation. It's to have us walk in intimacy with Jesus. Oh, I just hope that we get this, that we don't have to be scared anymore. But instead of being scared, we now get to remember who is for us and that God has no rival. So from now on, when you're tempted to be scared, and even if you step into being scared, let it be the trigger that calls you from scared to see the sacred power of God. Flip it. See it with heavenly wit. Thank you so much for joining me on today's triumphant, victorious reminders with Teresa Ann. What a blessing it is that you have come to my channel and I hope that you will share my channel with others. And thank you so much for sharing with me the revelations that God has given to you.